You know, good morning. Welcome to my mobile shop. <laughs> I'd share if you'd come by. Mmm, industrial made cookies. Anyway. Well, I didn't drag you all the way out here to look at some cookies. I got a hold of some Heath Kit HN31s. Oh, this is a Heath's answer to the 1000 watt dummy load. There are three versions of these. This one is probably the most popular. Mm, and the probably the, the, the nicest of the three. There's an earlier version of these that has no silk screening. Tells you what the model number is. It shows you the power rating, you know, in minutes. And has a nice little uh, adapter on the top where you can hook a voltmeter and get kind of a relative reading. Inside there really isn't much. There's a bushing to get you down to the resistor. And all this is just a little... Um, diode to rectify the RF so you can get a DC reading there. There's a resistor and a capacitor. And someone didn't do a great job of building that. I don't know how you screw this kit up. It's got about 10 moving parts. On this side is a snappy little relief valve. <clears throat> All it is is a spring and a washer. Just in case the dummy load gets warm and gasses off a little bit. These things can be kind of messy. They're full of oil. Actually, they're full of... Um, well, these are probably full of mineral oil. You'd have to find a pretty old one of these, I think, to have any transformer oil with any hazardous chemicals in them. But uh, be aware. And there are some synthetic oils that are older. If you're going to open this, it's just a paint can, literally. Just go around the outside real careful. There you go. This one has mineral on it because it's pretty thick. It's a consistency of mm, maybe a thin maple syrup. And it'll take a long time to drain down. Just set her off to the side there. It's a good time to roll. There you go. No big deal. Well, if you're going to take care of one of these, i give you a few tips here. Inside, uh, let's see here, on the bottom of this one, see those little beads or black marks there? What that is, is that is water that's condensing out of the atmosphere, and uh, since it's not going to float on top of that oil, it falls to the bottom, and it'll start to rust. You may find these, and their bottoms may be rusted through or out. You can solder them, but uh, it's no big deal. Another clue is if they sit in a damp place. Okay, let's see. There's a little rust on this one. This is actually mostly dirt. Again, no big deal. Some steel wool will clean that right up. And what I like to do is, if you're going to take care of these, is steel wool them and then clear them with some spray poly. You can mask this off. On the inside, dump this oil. What I do is I dump it into an old milk jug after you've washed it out or something. And just dump it in there and run it through a uh, funnel with a, like a cheesecloth in it. And the cheesecloth will catch that moisture. 
and then it'll screen that out of there. Another no-no on these is don't let oil accumulate in the rim. Take a paper towel. Sweep that up. If you're going shopping for one of these, take your trusty ohm meter with you. And first thing you do is look around, see if there are any dents. No big deal. Actually, the scratches are pretty incons or the dents are pretty inconsequential. You can usually push them out. If worse comes to worse, you can buy a new can. This is just a standard paint can. Some other stuff to check is check the hardware here. Make sure this is tight. Make sure these are tight. And uh, get out your trusty ohm meter. see what we got here and the verdict is 45 ohms not bad these can go as high as 70 it's not a big deal let's see what we got here 66 ohms not bad very seldom do you find any of these that are exactly 50 ohms so if you're kind of a fuss pot um, you're gonna be disappointed this one here is in pretty good condition too, although somebody has left the screws in it. I thought I saw a little dent there. You could drain the oil and push that out with a dolly or a block of wood. Again, just look it over. One of the things I like to do on these is um, where this goes on top, there's a little insulator. Try that. There we go. Right there, that little little white thing. And before I assemble them, I put a little dab of RTV around the top and the bottom of that. And uh, it'll help seal that up a little bit and put a dab of RTV on the screws, and on the heads of the screws and under this little chassis. It'll seal that up. When you're carrying these, it has a tendency to slosh up underneath and it'll get up under there and it'll kind of wick that um, fluid up in there. And you're gonna put these back on just walk your hand heal your hand around. Just kind of back and forth. No big deal. Or a little rubber hammer. We'll be peeking this one. Yeah, this one has synthetic oil. The uh, mineral oil, which you can get at a vet supply place or the drugstore, sells little bottles of it. Now, this one has a serious problem. If you can see that or not. See how far down that is? That's uh, That ought to be probably without about an inch of the top so it will cover all of this. This is actually a chimney and when this gets heated the convection currents from the heat will circulate the oil. This one's too low. Eh. And no, you really shouldn't mix the different brands of oil. If you're unsure about something like this, no big deal. Just uh, don some gloves and maybe a face mask or eyewear. Just pour it carefully into a bottle and wrap it all up. The uh, the bottle, the funnel, and the uh, any other tools you use. Take it to the local chemical place to be disposed of. They'll be more than happy to take care of it for you. It's no big deal. Well, there you go. There's uh, everything you. Maybe we're curious about about the cantana. It doesn't get any better than that. I guess somebody lost the screws out of that. It's no big deal. Take her easy. Have a groovy day.